Romantic relationships that have an imbalance are some of the hardest to navigate. Now, if you've heard this, and when I talk about imbalance, one person cares more than the other person. In fact, you might have heard the saying, the person who cares the least has the power. I heard that in the movie Ghosts of Girlfriends Past with Matthew McConaughey and Michael Douglas, who was the quintessential player, said that to his nephew. Okay, so what are some of these challenges when you're in a relationship where you want more than the other person? These are relationships that lack clarity. That's right, these relationships that lack clarity. What I mean by clarity is, what's the purpose of this relationship? Like, what's the purpose of it? Now, if we go backward, I think it's really important to recognize the purpose of dating, okay? Let's differentiate dating from a relationship. Dating is that period of time that you get to know someone. That's called dating, okay? And the purpose of dating is vetting that person to determine if they're a fit to be in relationship. Now, what's the purpose of relationship? It's have a good time. We should just have a good time. It's all about having a good time. Folks, that's not the purpose of a relationship. The real purpose of relationship is to determine if the two of you are compatible enough to actually seek a long-term committed relationship that leads to maybe either moving in together or getting married. Now, I recognize a lot of people in midlife don't want to get remarried. I get that. And some of you may not want to live with someone. You enjoy your freedom. But ultimately, you're going to reach a point in your life, maybe when you hit 60, maybe when you hit 70, maybe when you hit 80, that you don't want to still be dating, okay? This is why I'm such a big proponent of doing a better job in choosing the people that you're going to engage in the dating process and then choosing people that make sense from a relationship perspective. This is why I created my private coaching. By the way, you see a link right here, jonathanasley.com forward slash coaching. Schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. My area of expertise is to teach you based on your personality, what questions you should be asking at the very early onset of a relationship. And again, this is based on your personality to determine, is this person capable enough to be in a relationship? Do they have good emotional maturity and relationship skills to be in a relationship? These are the types of things we work on when I work with clients. Why is this critically important? Because the reality is, is most human beings at midlife, this is the you know, midlife is after baby making years and before retirement. I'm talking about women because men can make babies probably until they're 70 or 80, or at least they can spread their seed to create a baby. For those in midlife, roughly about 75% of singles who are actively in the dating marketplace are divorced. And with divorce comes an unraveling of the tapestry of one's old life. And in that unraveling of tapestry, oftentimes there can be significant traumas that have occurred in that marriage or that significant relationship. And then when a person goes out in the dating marketplace and they're rather clueless, men are rather clueless, ladies, you're just as equally clueless as well. Many people can get burned over and over and over again. And guess what happens? They become mistrusting. Have you ever gone out with a man who says, I have trust issues? Have you ever gone out with them? I'm not laughing. I'm, I'm smiling only because I see this happen so frequently. You ever gone out with a man who's been hurt and he's reluctant to actually be capable or ready for a relationship and yet you're wanting more? So what do you do in these particular cases? Well, it starts from the very beginning. It starts from the very beginning. What I mean by very beginning is to do a better job asking questions in the early onset. Now, before I go into, I'm gonna provide you something really amazing tonight. So please stick around for the next five or six minutes because you're gonna love what I'm about to share. But I wanna tell you a story of where I, I suspect most women operate in the dating realm. And I want to use the example of a woman who reached out to me years ago, and she was in a relationship with a man for about eight or nine months. And she calls me up and wants some coaching advice. I said, great. Okay. And she's telling me the backstory of the relationship. And she says, Jonathan, I just want more commitment out of this relationship. They've been together for nine months. They see each other a couple times a week. You know, they've spent time with family and friends, but it's not progressing anymore. 
or any further than that. And she goes, Jonathan, I just want more commitment out of them. I'm like, great. What does that look like for you? But Jonathan, I just want more commitment out of him. Great. What does that look like for you? But Jonathan, I just want more commitment out of him. I'm like, great. What does that look like for you? Jonathan, you're not hearing me. You're not listening to me. I'm like, no, you're not saying anything. Ladies, first, you have to determine what does a relationship look like for you? In fact, I want you to go to grab a calendar, an old type of calendar where you can write things in and write in what Monday looks like, what Tuesday looks like, what Wednesday looks like, what Thursday looks like, what Friday looks like, what Saturday looks like, what Sunday looks like, and do it every day of the week for a year to get an idea of what you want your relationship to look like. And then what does commitment really mean to you? Because this woman who says, I want more commitment out of a man, if she couldn't articulate to me what that means, well, how can he ever know to fulfill that? Ladies, you're expecting us to be mind readers. I asked a simple question. What does that look like for you? And she was like, I don't know. I mean, I'm being rhetorical here, but I'm just saying, she was like a deer in the headlights. She hadn't contemplated it. When I worked with her, she walked away with a much greater picture to establish her standards. See, when you know the type of relationship you look for, that's your standards, okay? All right, now with that said, I wanna dive into, you're in the early stages of dating someone, and I'm gonna give you a little script to work on and tell me how this resonates with you. I'd like to hear your comments on this one, okay? But the script goes something like this. Okay. Now let's, let's first establish that you've met someone, you've had a good first date. There's mutual attraction for one another. He is per pursuing you. He's making effort to want to see you. And it's not just this love bombing. Oh my God, you're the most amazing woman on the planet. And listen, all you have to do is sit back in your feminine energy because I'll do all the leading. <laughs> By the way, the reason why I have contempt for feminine energy coaching, it predisposes it, it base is on it's based on the premises that men are provider protectors and that they're actually providing, they want to pay your bills, they want to protect you, and they want to protect you emotionally. That's a very naive supposition, given that most men after divorce are actually rather gun shy. And quite frankly, they may not have the financial resources in many cases to be that provider protector. So just sitting in your feminine energy is magically going to work with the dysfunctional group of men and women who are in the dating marketplace in the over 40 category. All right. Now, just predispose, pre, my, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Let me paint the picture of the scenario. You've just met a man. There's mutual attraction and he isn't overly love bombing you. And yet he wants to see you. He's making effort to see you. Now, before you give your heart to a man, I really invite you to ask deeper questions. And this is the, this, the, the script I want to prepare for you. And if you want to reach out to me, you can get a copy of this. Just schedule a discovery call with me right here to get a copy of this script. And it goes like this. Before we embark on this train of getting to know one another, okay, I have a few questions. Now it seems many men don't seem to know what they want regarding a relationship. In addition, there are a lot of men who are playing the field for sex. And I hear from my girlfriends and even dating coaches I watch on YouTube that a man will chase sex claiming they want a relationship. And yet when it comes to committing, they come up with all kinds of excuses like they're too busy or they're not ready for a relationship. Ladies, have you heard that from a man? He's too busy. Oh my God, I'm so busy at work. I've got all these projects at work. Oh my God, work is so busy, 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 busy. I don't have time for a relationship. Well, you had enough time to try to get in my pants. These are for the men who are progressing the relationship and they only seem to be driven by sex, okay? And then the other excuse a lot of men at midlife give is their children. It's so fascinating how easy the children card pops into the narrative as an excuse. 
Now, I'll be candid with you. I've used that as an excuse. I've used my children as an excuse. I've used busy as an excuse. I think that excuse is I just wasn't that into them. Yeah, I'm sorry to say I wasn't that into them. And it was easier to tell them my children were my priority than it was to say, look, I'm just not into you. Because guess what, ladies? Most men who are into you, they will make you a priority. And let me repeat that. When a guy is into you, it's not his work is priority. It's not his children, although those are very important. And work and children are very important. Let me not diminish that. But a man who's into you, he will make time for you. He won't make excuses. Okay? So now here's the questions I'm going to share with you. I'm just going to reread everything again. Before we embark on this train to get to know one another, I have a few questions. Many men don't seem to know what they want regarding a relationship. In addition, there are a lot of men who are playing the field for sex. And I hear from my girlfriends and dating coaches on YouTube that a man will chase sex, claiming he wants a relationship. And yet then when it comes to committing, they'll come up with all kinds of excuses like they're too busy or I'm not ready. So I hear my couple questions for you. Is that okay? Ask his permission. My question for you is, what kind of relationship are you looking for? And what makes you ready for such a relationship? I'm gonna repeat that. What, what kind of relationship are looking for and what makes you ready for such a relationship? Can you share with me your dating and relationship history and why it didn't work out with the others? And what makes you think I'm different? You've invested time in me. What makes you think I'm different? How long does it take for you to trust someone? And should sex be reserved for two people who trust each other? Ladies, you have one job in dating. Is he worthy of your time and heart? Is he worthy of your time and heart? And more importantly, is he capable of commitment? Does he have good relationship skills? That is, you're like interviewing. He's, you're interviewing him for the job a boyfriend and girlfriend to one another. It's your job to determine if he's a fit. So let me come back to these questions I just laid out. By the way, do these questions resonate with you? Please let me know. Please post a comment below. In fact, if you're finding value in this video right now, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Okay. And if you need some support, check out all the links in the, in the show notes to see if working with a coach is right for you. Now let's go back to questions. What kind of relationship are you looking for? And what makes you ready for such a relationship? Well, you know, I just want something casual. Okay. You want something casual. I get it. You're not ready for anything serious. Well, let me just let you know something. A man's penis doesn't get to go inside my vagina until he knows he wants something serious with me. Okay. Let me repeat that. I don't care if it's you, bud, or anyone else. A man's penis doesn't get to go inside my vagina until he knows he wants a serious relationship and he wants to explore a serious relationship with me. Well, I'm not ready for that. Yeah, I get that, ladies. 90% of guys will bail on this because 90% of guys are, they're rather clueless. They're winging it. They have no clue what they want. They want companionship. They want connection. They want sex. But a big chunk of those men aren't ready for commitment. So what you have to do is be radically honest. You have to lay your cards on the table and more important, the rules of engagement. And what that means is you know your standard of what you're looking for a relationship and is he willing to meet that standard? Let's keep going with some of these questions. Can you share with me your dating and relationship history and why it didn't work with others? Listen, if he throws everyone else under the bus, and takes no ownership for the problems in his past, guess who, guess, who's gonna, guess who he's gonna repeat that pattern with? You. You're either crazy, you have issues, you want him for my, whatever it is. Do you wanna be his somebody I used to know? Ask him about his past experience. What did he learn about himself? What positive things did he learn about himself in these past relationships? What was good about them? What are you most grateful for? What makes you think I'm different? Ask this question. What makes you think I'm different? How long does it take 
for you to trust someone? And do you believe trust should be reserved for those people who want to be physically intimate with one another? Boy, that's a loaded question. Because now he's got a really, I mean, this is a real tough one. How do you know you trust someone? I mean, and you give him an example. Would you be willing to give someone a a $10,000? That's certainly someone you trust. See, guys can have sex with you, but they wouldn't give you money. They wouldn't loan you money. That demonstrates trust. In fact, it's funny. In today's marketplace, in the dating marketplace, sex is almost free, but God forbid you ask to borrow money from someone, man or woman alike, it's going to be an absolute no because we value money more than we do our bodies. That's how messed up it is out there. Ah, I'm yelling. Get into your zone, Jonathan. So what's going to make things different? Folks, let's say you want more from the man you're with right now. I highly recommend grabbing a copy of this book, Eight Dates by Doctors John and Julie Gottman. This is the foundational questions that you should be asking one another if you're in a romantic relationship where you're exploring a commitment with one another. And if you find yourself in a relationship that you're doubting, then cut sex off, have a serious conversation to determine if you're on the same page before you find yourself becoming another, that's just somebody I used to know. Look at many of you are, are suffering. I get it. The number one emotional health issue is I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable and I'm not likable. Look at, I wish I could heal that for everyone. When my son passed away, I wrote a book. What the heck is self-love anyway? A journey of personal development, self-help and spiritual work. By the way, the link in the description below to get a copy of my book. Why did I write this? It's not a dating and relationship book. It's an empowerment book. So you don't take from people. You don't settle for less than what you deserve. Ladies, you have a propensity to give your power away. Now, sadly, many of human beings are suckling on the nipple of, I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. Folks, when you feel good about yourself, you will make better choices. And let me just tell you right now with the dysfunctional dating marketplace out there, it is incumbent upon you to make better choices. This, and many of you have a broken picker, quite frankly. And my job is to help you in that capacity. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. So what'd you think of those questions I came up with? I think these are really some important stuff. You know, when there's my sweetheart, Marie, I was on our second date. We had, I had flew out to Chicago for a wedding and she joined me at the wedding. You know, we laid our cards on the table. We asked some really deep, radically honest questions by the time she came to visit me. And by the way, for the record, many of you might be asking, why isn't she here tonight? Well, she had to fly out to Chicago for a funeral. She won't be back shooting a video for, with me for about another week. So, but what I appreciate most is we, we talked about the, the, the real important stuff. We talked about our past relationships, why our marriages didn't work, what happened in our significant relationships after our marriage, our dating experiences. We talked about that. We talked about finances. We wanted to know where we were about, both at financially to see if it made sense to explore a relationship given we had distance. And then ultimately we said for this to work, we had to live in the same city for this to actually have any legs. And because she grew up in Los Angeles, she has two children in Los Angeles. Her dearest friend lives just two buildings away. And her best friend lives just you know in downtown or uh, north of LA, whom I get to spend, I've spent time with them, really great guy. You know, it made sense. Many of you are dating, trying to fit square pegs and round holes and hoping, you know what, if I just do what he, if I just make him happy, he'll love me. Folks, that's not how to operate. Don't give your power away to men. Don't sit in your feminine energy just hoping that Prince Charming is gonna, you know, a man is gonna be Prince Charming. It's incumbent upon you to become Princess Charming first so you can actually attract in a partner who's ready to meet you where you're at. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. All right. If you want more from a man, but he's not ready, it's your job. It, listen, bottom line is this, your job to vet for the ones who are ready because the guys who aren't ready, you could be, wait, listen, the bodies are buried from here to the moon for women waiting for men to become ready. And guess who they are ready for? The woman right after you.
I may repeat that, the woman right after you. Don't find yourself in that situation. Do a better job pre-qualifying men in the get-go. All right. I hope you found value in this conversation. Again, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Post a comment below. All right. For those who are on live right now, we are going to do my Q&A.